welcome HeroClix players. I'm at the uh, International Players Fund event in Omaha, Nebraska. This is uh, Calder Ness. Some of you might not know him. He does HeroClix stuff. I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, I got Calder in. I got a few other people here. The door is just open as I do shaky cam as I've been uh, commenting about. Uh, shout out to uh, Lucas Van Hollen, his YouTube uh, career starting off, so yay. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the early morning. Uh, I am playing uh, the meta, which is Necron and uh, Blackheart and Orb. So we'll see how we go from here. All right, uh, let's go. It's early morning and I didn't get enough sleep. Okay, we're early morning again. As you can see, this this little area is packed. There's a lot of players. This is great. Uh, we're here. I think it's Dragon Layers Comics and Games here in Omaha. So yeah, more more and more people uh, showing up uh, here. So yeah. All right, uh, let's go. No, no, okay. No, 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 no. Hold everyone. Call, call their nest playing, <laughs> playing magic. No, no, no. He's playing magic. It looks like it's not it looks like it's casual, it's purely for fun. I would never, I would never. <laughs> I can, I, well, he's playing magic. We, we, again, I know other folks play magic. Like a certain particular other person I know plays magic. He, he plays, he plays magic. Don't, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay, uh, so Calder, all right, um, I, I got ninth place, people. That's what I get for trying to play uh, mid-tier clicks and not trying to wipe all my opponents. Only to face Lucas Van Hollen in my final round and not be able to get any points. So, so right now, Calder, um, what is your main lesson that you've learned from the tournament so far? From the tournament? Man. From I've, learned, I've learned running a tournament takes a lot more work than you think it does, definitely. Uh, making sure your players stay happy, stay not hungry, but full, all sorts of stuff like that. This man bought us pizza. I want to make sure I want to make sure everybody had pizza. I got some water for everybody. You know, people are saying, you know, we want to take a break or whatever, but I know we're kind of coming up across a few different people that are also playing in this space. You got to learn to share the space with other nerds and other games. And I want to respect that. So I wanted to make sure we got to top eight as soon as possible, even though we, when we found out, sadly like Ed, that some three ones might lose and not be able to make top eight. Well, I wanted to make sure we still got some extra prizing for people. I just want to keep my players happy and making sure the entire event is a blast for the entire day. I'm not salty. I, I primarily came and got one of the things that I wanted, which was a pizza box, so I'm not salty. Okay, so other than that, what what was one thing you're like, uh, duh, I'm going to see that? And what was one thing that was like, man, I didn't think anyone was going to play that. Yeah, so... Pulp, had, Pulp is not a very creative meta right now. It's, Necron. It's very, it's Necron. Blackheart. Uh, Necron, Blackheart, Orb, Doctor Strange, Mr. Sinister is almost every single team. I played that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So, uh, what was surprising was Red Guardian was played today. I like Red Guardian. A lot is a Pulp pick. He just straight up gets a, uh, now nah, you miss me with that attack. So he gets to ignore one attack or an adjacent friendly character. You can have that attack completely miss them once per game, which is really cool. So, I think there's some tech out there in Pulp that people want to get a little more creative, they could probably find something. There are other teams that you Okay, so if, if anything, if you were playing Calder, okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you the honest truth. Uh, are you part of the machine of, of Necron Orb and uh, Blackheart? You know, I've never really followed the meta too terribly closely, no matter... He says that. I say that. I've played Jason Wingard before. I know, I know. Uh, Pope's in a weird spot. It really is. I think I would play Orb. I don't think I would be on, like, the Sinister Necron train so much. If there were more Captain Americas that were good in the comments, I would try to play them. But they aren't. They just aren't. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I would like to try to play Dracula, I'm not going to lie. I think that would be the thing I would like to try to make, make good, make meta, try to empower that. But, you know, probably some aspects of the machine would be on my build. That's honestly, that's the truth. Like, I I'll be honest, if, if you're not playing Doctor strange you're you're just playing with yourself to put your critical clicks uh, but but yeah you have to play dr. strange 
Uh, yeah, you just have to. All right. So, uh, if anything, so far, how has your IPF charity gone so far this year? Oh you my gosh. The IPF is a great idea. Simeon, Ian, myself, we love the Heroics community. We love the international community. We want to bring more people. Last year we brought two people over. The goal this year is to double it, bring four people from other countries to America for the World Tournament in Memphis. We have already raised close to like three to four thousand dollars, which is way more than the IPF got last time, through a broadcast event, this event, uh, the auction in Florida, as well as the San Antonio event. So having more events with better prizing this year is just so much better for the IPF and I'm overall I couldn't be more excited with how everything is going this year. Okay. Outside of Kevin, what is the favorite thing that you're giving away? What is the favorite thing that you're giving away? Uh, giving away Kevin was wild. Uh, at the time when we gave it away, we uh, didn't know that's what we were giving away. He's like, if I knew, that would have been a grand that would have gone towards IPF. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got me that. Uh, it's the broadswords. Being able to take something that was exclusive to Adepticon and then bring it even more Midwest than Chicago feels great. Uh, broadswords are crazy exclusive, like 50-ish or so were given out at Adepticon. And we got to give out another 26 and more today. So I like that. I have two. See, one will go on eBay. Possibly two. Be looking out for those. Okay, uh, last thoughts on the tournament so far. I know it's not over. It's still going. It's still running. Listen, we got. Uh, I, I will say, when the tournament happened, when we were organizing it, we knew South Dakota was have a strong presence. South Dakota is one of the best play groups. Kind of figured South Dakota would just be the top eight. So I'm really happy to see we still have a Nebraska native. Richard uh, is in top four. Right hey, now. hey, hey, Seth from Kansas City made top top eight. Okay, I'm with Tristan. He's in top four. Hello. <laughs> Can you tell us about your lovely team shirt? Oh, my, my shirt. Okay. So it's Ian Eggleson. And he, I chose the U.S. National Champion as a height for him to be one inch shorter than. So Alex Mater, he's right over here. But yeah, this that's, is. That's. Oh, no, wait. I need to like super zoom in and zoom out. That's that's Alex Mater. But go ahead. Zoom in. Yeah. Um, I believe that Gavin has it. Hold on. Okay. We, we have fully professional interviews um, here, but yeah. So yeah, it's one is shorter than him, and then he's, he's uh, they gave him his mug shot because he committed the crime of stunting uh -huh. too hard, as he normally does, you know. There we go. We even got him right so, here. So, again, I asked Ian before, how do you feel being a, a mascot on a team shirt? <laughs> Honestly, it's, uh, it's very flattering. It's really funny. They marked me at 5'4", which is, you know, very generous of them. It's about two inches taller than I normally am. So, no, it's uh, it's really cool. These guys are a lot of fun, and uh, I'm all for it. I'm all. All right, all right. So please tell everybody the name of your your unofficial official organization. Uh, I think we're the Chainsaw Chad. I think that's the name. I think that's the name. I got it on here even. Uh, yeah. In here somewhere. Right here, Chainsaw Chips. Okay. Uh, I thought it was Chainsaw Chips. No, that's okay. because, Chips not modern anymore. So they, you just abandoned your previous mascot. Chainsaw Chad. You were like, the old god is dead. Yes. We have a new god now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. All, right. All right. Well, good luck. <laughs> Tristan, me on. Good, good luck, right. Alex. We're going to go on to see if I can get one more person. All right. Uh, I have a newer player at uh, the IPF event. State your name for everybody. Hi, uh, Mikey. Mikey. How long have you been playing, man? I've been playing about three and a half years. Three and a half years. All right. This is my first time seeing him. Um, so what is your the biggest thing that you've taken away from uh, this tournament? Uh, that in hindsight, I probably should have played a, like, a team that probably had like a meta thing because I just played Sinister Syndicate. Okay, but you played what you wanted to play, right? Yeah, I had fun. That's that's the. I am competitive, but also we have to have fun too, people. Okay, so you you have fun. What was your team for everybody? Um, I gotta remember. Oh, uh, he's like I don't remember. I'm gonna get. I gotta get it out. I do, but it's been my brain's just turned off. It's like it's, this. it's the end of the tournament day. We all understand. I had Beetle, Mysterio, Sandman, Kingpin, Chameleon, and uh, Bullseye. Okay, so uh, I'm just trying to scan over it real quick so y'all can see. Uh, so, so what made you, we joked about this on uh, the side, uh, that 
what was one thing we weren't prepared for? Someone to play kingpin. <laughs> Lo and behold, you played the kingpin. So, what was your thought process building your team? Um, mainly, I was just looking through keywords because I like building theme teams because that's just how I think. I was like, well, I could do defenders, I could do Avengers. I was like, well, I could do Sinister Syndicate because I don't know. It was just a thought process I had, and I heard a lot of people talking about Kingpin. Obviously, it wasn't this one, but I chose this one because it also be funny. Because like, oh, someone's reading a Kingpin, but not the one they think. Yeah. Okay. So what was what was one thing that you did with the team today that was like, yeah, I was planning on doing. That it, it, it happened. Um, basically, with Kingpin making uh, or um, him bringing in his police officers, so everybody went so and because of Chameleon, everybody with Sinister Syndicate has uh, the wild card and they all get the PD team ability. Oh, okay, so you're pretty much stacking your PD yeah. and you're able to consistently deal with that. Yeah, okay, I was able to pull it off okay, all right. Uh, if anything, what was your favorite figure out of your build today? Probably a tie between Kingpin and Chameleon because Wow. Uh, or actually, no, Mysterio. Because in one match, I almost won with just him alone. Because oh. his constant just, I just kept getting the shape change rolls. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. If you had any advice for anybody starting off, coming to like their first event here, what would what would your advice be? Don't take it too seriously. Just be here to have fun. Because if you take it too seriously, hey guys, you'll get too negative. Don't take a seat just yet. Okay. So just be to have fun. All right. Well, that's it. Um, I like to thank y'all for watching. We got a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament moving in here, and uh, yeah. So from Omaha, uh, I bid y'all adieu, and uh, we're counting down to the final episode of Starting Over Podcast. Uh, this is for you, Lucas. Shake your can. Shake your can. Shake your can. Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, <clears throat> I know I'm late on putting up this video. Uh, a really big apologies to Calder. Uh, my goal was to have this up a couple of weeks ago, uh, but uh, life sort of kicked me in the butt. Uh, I'm trying to get my teacher certification test done. I got one, my last one, this weekend. Uh, and so between that and after this tournament, I had a wedding to go to. And then after that, I had my teacher test. And then after that, I had some repairs and other stuff I did do around my house and after that after that after that so uh, I know it's sort of uh, hey yeah life does grab you but yo man you you a month late on this like what's up um, and then also I had some time where I was helping teammates get ready for uh, rock cup and uh, all the things that went along with that um, overall I'm, I'm just going to sort of give you my thoughts on Pulp right now. And I know this is like, hey, no one's really thinking about Pulp. And I'm like, yeah, and I think that's the best time to sort of sit back and really think about things, about how it matters or even more so like, hey, maybe, you know, now it's time for me to try to figure out some secret tech or whatnot. Um, the first thing that I'm just gonna say right now, our big problem with Pulp is still sinister. And, and the main reason I say it's sinister is being able to force people to miss uh, in big roles, it, it really is a lot more crushing than um, it appears to be. Uh, there's just too many times where I was playing I'm just like yeah my opponent should have been able to overcome me at that period of time but I was just like uh, sinister 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 cover <clears throat> sinister covered so many misplays that I had it it just it wasn't right it wasn't right on any level um the next major thing I think is realistically asking our questions about hey should orb be in the pulp pool and the ability to make crit hits real easily uh, and to replace a die um, that's something that we have to ask a, a, a question about it, is this okay 
and him crit hitting on one ones, uh, functionally making it so that he can't ever crit miss. Uh, and it also makes it a little bit rough that if he rolls a 6-6, six, six, there is no downside. He functionally has uh, a way higher chance than he should of, of crit hitting. Um, and I think that's an issue when you start going down the rabbit hole in pulp because, yeah, there's not equipment, but hey, he has energy explosion and now he's hitting for energy explosion for three plus knockback. So that is a lot of damage in some situations. Um, three at worst, I'm sorry, at best. I'm sorry, no, three at worst and four at best. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a thought. Uh, another thing that I would just sort of like want to really expound upon is I think you need to allow for starters, regardless if they're part of a main set, to be in pulp. Uh, and, and here's why. If you look at your uh, Hero Clicks uh, starter uh, for this year, there are several very solid characters that would have really been great uh, to have. The first is just 50 point Superman. F 50 point Superman would be baller in pulp. I would love to have 50 point Superman in pulp. Uh, he, he's just that good. Uh, there's there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Uh, you know who else uh, would be really good in uh, 50, uh, sorry, uh, in pulp? Just take a guess. That's, that's in a starter. Uh, I'll give you one more second. Uh, Captain Marvel. Yes, Cap Captain Marvel. And the reason why um, Captain Marvel would have been just ridiculous is she's super thick. She's super thick for her points, okay? And because she's super thick for her points, uh, and she has from, you know, at least from my perspective like just oh sorry uh dang it my uh, ac units i keep misclicking on the wrong thing on ac units and, and because she's super thick like for her points it makes you like really ask like oh man can i k you know as an opponent can i ko her real easily in pulp um and she has a lot of really good from my opinion damage output um and dealing with, you know, penetrating energy explosion or she's, you know, 11 attack for four with five range. Now, right now in the current game, that's not too hot. Uh, in the future, that's going to be really good. Uh, once we get down to these standardized small maps, that, that's going to be really good. So I, I realistically have to be like, yeah, that Superman and, and that Captain Marvel would realistically be super useful and you also have to ask yourself what is the purpose of pulp and the purpose of pulp is to have economically accessible figures so that people can play competitively and i i think the problem when you start disassociating your how can i say it, your core starter product product from that you have issues you have lots of issues so there's that and um let me let me go over my team for uh pulp and i had two teams and one in all honesty is uh what i would what i did run in the other one is what i thought about if i didn't have sinister um so it's blackheart or mr sinister necron um spiderling uh dr strange Madison and Lucky. That's what I ran for the tournament. And looking back, um, I should have, I, I was not on top of my pizza tokens and I should have been. Um, there were a few times where um, having Lucky just saying no shape change, it, it only really came into play for one uh, 
matchup, and unfortunately, it was against a young man that I helped coach uh, and rebuild his team so that it it was better. Uh, like, there's nothing Saturn Queen can do against Lucky. Like, her shape change is like mandatory, and then Lucky just comes in for 20 points and says, "No, um, no, no, Moss." Uh, so. You, you, Doctor Strange, and, and I'll tell you everybody this, and they should understand this if you're running Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is never guaranteed to make you an astral. He is never, ever, ever, ever guaranteed to make you an astral. Can he make you an astral? Yes. Is he? Can he? Has a chance of making you a Wong? Yes. But the truth of the matter is he is never, ever guaranteed to give you an enhancement. And because of that, there were games when I played at Worlds where I did not generate an Astral. And I really wish I had enhancement because it would have made my game so much easier. Um, so starting with an enhancement is mandatory, especially when you start dealing with Necron and his BS. And, and you know, I know some people that are like, I started Necron at 75 points. That's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. You can easily, if you play your order of operations right, get start Necron at 40. Make sure where he needs to be. Make sure he's where he needs to be. Set up your first attack with whoever that is. Get that KO. Go up to. Okay, you heal too, just from the KO. And then you go and take your shot if you need to, if you if need be. And then let's just say you just hit. Well, guess what? You're on Psychic Blast and, and uh, Exploit, and you're at 11 attack. Okay, let's say you kill something. All right, you're at top dial. There's no reason to start Necron um, at 75 or 125. That's, that's just a freaking waste. That's a freaking waste. You should have a serious enough offense where Necron starts his first turn off either as a overcast sniper to finish something off so that he heals up three or that you're going to kill enough stuff in your first turn that he's going to be on click two and then he's just going to unload on somebody for four base and then with that enhancement five or if you have two enhancements, six. And then he's going to be on top dial. Okay? So, there. I, I think we do have a little bit of a Necron problem. I think that's a, that's a little bit of an issue. I think once you start stacking Orb with Sinister, with Necron, and Blackheart, like you just... It, it's a lot. It's just way too much um, for the average person, um, Heroclix player, to deal with. I will say I do not see massive disruption from the Necron or Blackheart trilogy. I just don't. Uh, there's going to be a lot that has to be in play to take that off of the market. The first is somebody that's just like, you, you can't rain shoot me. You have to be on top of me. And they have really high defenses. And you need somebody else that's just going to say, like, hey, man, you, you can't replace dice. And I don't think you're going to get that firepower or those effects in pulp. I really don't think game design wants to put those types of game effects in the pulp. So uh, I, I, I know some folks will be like Spiderling. It's like it's just simple guaranteed so that you're going to crit hit on your first attack. That's it. That's all that is. So, uh, I, I like it. My other team, if I didn't have the um, Mr. Sinister's Blackheart, Orb, Necron, Spiderling, Doctor Strange, Starfire, um, that's 25 points, Starfire, 101.8. That's, again, you need that enhancement. Um, but this is a lot more aggressive, and truth be told, I really did wish I ran this. Uh, Frenchie, Madison, and a step for Cuckoo. Now, you're like, hold up, wait, what? Yeah, uh, Frenchie. So for some of you, you're going to be like, well, why Frenchie? And and it's real simple. Uh, Frenchie gives Orb uh, Precision Strike Willpower Enhancement. Or he could get Sidestep and Close Combat Expert. Uh, you're more than likely going to go to the Precision Strike Willpower Enhancement. 
And why is that? Well, who are you going to teleport next to when you move out with uh, Blackheart? You're going to have Orb there. Okay? That's just going to happen. So once that happens, what do you need up front? Do you need a Perplex and, and be a little bit more stealthy? There's your play. Um, and so I think that this was probably the what I should have went with if I had more time, if I was a little bit more confident. And the only reason I didn't, I made ninth place. Uh, and the only reason I didn't make top cut primarily was I wasn't aggressive enough. So that's another lesson. So uh, that is it. I, I know, again, for all those that are hanging on, um, props to you. All those that are super patient with me, uh, props to you. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't still be doing this if I didn't feel like I owed you, the listener, um, this bit of like, you know, last hurrah. Uh, that's, that's just how it is. Uh, I think six more shows left. Um, and then we will be done. I believe from, or, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is seven. So yeah, six more shows left. Um, I do believe what I want to do is have my last episode be from Worlds. Uh, I think that's where I want my big send off to be. So it's just about facilitating that and making sure that everything works accordingly. Um, and to court, quote my, my big homie from RPG Elite, uh, God willing. So that's it. Uh, thank you all for listening. And remember, we all have to start over.